I'm Michael Casnelli. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon, and today we're going to talk about SI joint dysfunction as well as treatment. The sacroiliac joint, or SI joint, is where the spine and the pelvis meet. The function is to transfer force from the upper to the lower portion of your body. There's not really a lot of motion uh, in the SI joint, but when it's painful, it can be very disabling. There are several causes of SI joint dysfunction or pain. Degeneration, just like any other joint in the body, uh, which can be painful. It could be the supporting structures uh, that are disrupted. There's also some uh, autoimmune uh, diseases that could afflict particularly the uh, SI joint. In my practice, uh, patients who have SI joint problems and pain typically say that they have pain located on one side of the lower back. Going up and down stairs, if their back pain is significantly worse with that. Uh, turning over in bed seems to be another a little bit more specific SI than your typical low back pain. It can cause numbness tingling down the leg and maybe even mimic a pinched nerve or uh, a disc herniation. Um, sometimes they'll refer pain to the groin, which can be confused with the hip. I think one of the, the problems with SI joint diagnosis uh, is that it can refer a lot of pain patterns. It is estimated anywhere from 15 to 30 percent of all low back pain to be coming from the SI joint and it's very common uh, to develop SI joint pain after a lumbar fusion. Estimated anywhere from around 40 percent to actually can develop an SI joint problem. So in chronic low back pain, patients and your two probably most important things are to ask the patient and listen to them. Most of the time they're going to tell you what their problem is and then your physical exam will hopefully sort of almost confirm that. In general, uh, when it comes to spinal surgery, it's really a last resort. So you really want to exhaust all your non-operative treatment. Uh, as far as the SI joint goes, it'd be common to have uh, medications, just anti-inflammatories, uh, physical therapy, um, there are SI belts. Uh, you can have injections, and depending on how long of relief you get from those, the, uh, your SI joint pain could be managed by that. If you're a person that um, has had uh, SI joint pain, you have good relief with the SI injections, but they just don't do as well or don't last as long as they used to, uh, that's where consideration of an SI fusion comes in. When a patient is a candidate for an SI fusion, I will use the iFuse implant system. So the surgery itself is typically less than an hour and everything is done through a small incision on the outside of the hip. We work through a uh, tube, uh, placing pins across the SI joint, overdrawing those pins and placing the final implant. The recovery process has really evolved um, and I'll tell patients not necessarily a strict, what we call touchdown weight bearing where you can put your foot on the ground but try not to really put any weight through it. Um, I think as long as you're not really stressing the implant, jumping up and down, walking miles, uh, that it's probably going to be okay. So I chose iFuse because it was the original. Um, it's FDA approved, but it's also very unique. It's the only triangular uh, shaped implant. Uh, and again, it works well for the anatomy of the SI joint and the biomechanics of the SI joint. It's actually the best studied implant in spinal surgery with more than 70 uh, articles. Uh, very good level one evidence uh, demonstrating its safety and efficacy. I've been doing the iFuse procedure uh, for over 10 years and I can tell you that if somebody has an SI joint problem, they will be better after this procedure. Um, they are some of the happiest patients in my practice. Um, it truly is remarkable, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I've continued to do the procedure. If what's been described sounds like you and you think you might have an SI joint problem, please call our office and we'll be happy to evaluate you.